Does RAM speed matter with the 9800X 3D for Escape from Tarkov? Today I'll be doing a comparison at three different DDR5 speeds. 4800CL40, 6400CL26, and 8000CL36. Will spending more on memory actually improve FPS, or are the gains too small to justify the price? Let's find out. I ran tests on labs and streets offline first to get baseline numbers. Then I took the three configurations online to streets on live servers to get real world performance numbers. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly which RAM kit delivers the best bang for your buck on the 9800X 3D. I'll also break down price to performance propositions and recommend which option best fits your build. But first, let's talk about the setup and why RAM speed matters less for X3D CPUs than you might think. For this test, I used AMD's flagship 9800X 3D paired with an RTX 4090 to eliminate GPU bottlenecks. The RAM I used is a 2x16 32GB high-end SK Hynix ADI kit rated at 8000CL36 with timings adjusted for each configuration. Like I said earlier, at 4800CL40, this is the stock timings, 6400CL26 with tuned secondaries, and 8000CL36, which is the XMP rating for this set. Benchmarks were conducted at 1080p for CPU focused results, 1440 for realistic gaming scenarios, and 4K for the enthusiasts out there. I also used my Pure 80 graphics preset for this test. If you're looking to optimize Tarkov and fine tune your settings, be sure to check out my optimization guide linked in the upper right hand corner. The 9800X3D's massive L3 cache reduces reliance on RAM speed compared to traditional CPUs, but with this test we'll see if faster RAM improves minimum FPS and overall smoothness during gameplay. Alright, so let's get to the numbers. Starting with labs at 1080p, we see some clear differences in performance. At 4800CL40, the system delivered an average FPS of 416, with 1% lows at 318 and 0.1% lows at 236. Moving to 6400CL26, we see a jump in average FPS up to 430, with slightly better 1% lows at 323 and an improved 0.1% low at 240. At the high end, 8000CL36 offered the best overall performance with an average FPS of 432. Matching the 323 FPS 1% low of 6400 CL26 and a slightly lower 0.1% low of 239. The improvements here are modest but noticeable in averages and lows as you scale up. However, the differences in 1% and 0.1% lows between 64 and 8000 are negligible, so gamers may want to weigh the price difference before going for the fastest option. Next up in 1440p with 4800 CL40, the system managed an average FPS of 399, 1% lows of 304, and 0.1% lows at 2 20. Moving up to 6400CL26, the average FPS increased to 413, 1% lows reaching 316, and a solid improvement in the 0.1% lows to 238. At the top tier, 8000CL36 achieved the highest numbers with an average FPS of 424, 1% lows at 321, and 0.1% lows at 236. Here the improvements are more pronounced, especially when jumping from 4800CL40 to 6400CL26. Still as with 1080p, the gap between 6400CL26 and 8000 CL36 narrows, making the middle tier kit a compelling option for its price to performance ratio. Finally, in Labs 4K, the story changes a little bit. With 4800CL40, the system reached an average FPS of 202, 1% lows at 159, and 0.1% lows at 142. Surprisingly, 6400CL26 delivered pretty much the same numbers with FPS at 201, 1% at 159, but slightly improved 0.1% lows at 150. Lastly, 8000CL36 numbers were almost identical again, average FPS at 202, 1% lows at 160, and 0.1% low at 146. At 4K, the performance difference differences between RAM kits are almost negligible, highlighting that GPU constraints dominate at this resolution. The choice of RAM has little impact here, making 4800CL40 a cost-effective option for 4K enthusiasts. Although there were some differences between the kits on labs, overall the numbers were still pretty close. When I switch over to Streets of Tarkov, the results start to show a clear performance hierarchy. In the offline testing in 1080, the 6400CL26 kit leads the pack with an average FPS of 199, 1% lows of 160, and the 8000 CL36 kit falls slightly behind at 179 FPS with 1% lows of 146. This was surprising as I did expect the 8000 kit to outperform the 4800 kit in average FPS. It's a great example of how ultra high RAM speeds don't always translate into real world gains. The 4800 CL40 kit while the slowest on paper still managed respectable numbers at a 187 average and 145 for the 1% load. It pretty much matched the 8000 kit in 1% lows, but the 8000 kit 
did have an advantage in the 0.1% lows at 122 for the 4800 versus 133 for the 8000. At 1440p, the trend continues. The 6400 CL26 kit once again takes the lead with an average FPS of 184, 1% lows of 150. The 8000 CL36 kit narrows the gap slightly but still underperforms relative to its price. The average FPS of 179 and 1% lows of 148. The 4800 CL40 kit struggles to keep up here with an average of 171 FPS and 1% lows of 134. If you're aiming for smooth gameplay at 1440, the 6400 kit remains the best choice, offering the best performance without overspending on diminishing returns. And once again, in 4K, the differences are almost non-existent. Average FPS across all kits hovers between 142 and 144, while the 1% and 0.1% lows are almost identical. This is further proof that at 4K, ramp speed doesn't have a significant impact on performance. The 4800 CL40 kit becomes the most logical choice for this resolution, as it performs just as well as the more expensive kits without breaking the bank. Now let's look at streets online at 1080. Here the differences between RAM kits becomes even more pronounced. The 6400 CL26 kit delivers the best performance with an average FPS of 128 and 1% lows of 103. This makes it the clear winner for smooth gameplay. The 8000 CL36 kit trails behind with an average FPS of 119 and 1% lows of 89, showing that spending extra for ultra high speeds doesn't always pay off with the next 3D. The 4800 CL40 kit falls further back than average FPS of 160 and 1% lows of 81. This resulted in an actually noticeable difference between the kits in terms of smoothness during gameplay. At 1440 online, we see similar trends. The 6400 CL26 kit leads with an average FPS of 138 and solid 1% lows of 98. The 8000 CL36 kit closes the gap slightly, averaging 125 FPS and 96 FPS for the 1% lows. But that's still not enough to justify the higher price for me. The 4800 CL40 kit lags behind both again, with an average FPS of 121 and 1 percent lows of 78. At this resolution, the 6400 kit offers the best combination of performance and price, especially for competitive players. And finally, at 4K online, the differences shrink once again. The average FPS ranges from 120 for the 4800 CL40 kit to 127 for the 6400 CL26 kit. The 1 percent and 0.1 percent lows are nearly identical across the board, with all three kits delivering smooth gameplay. This makes the 4800 kit the most practical option for 4K gaming once again, spending extra for faster RAM at this resolution simply doesn't provide enough of a performance boost to justify that cost. Now let's break down the price to performance of each RAM kit based on the results and their prices. The 4800 CL40 kit, priced around $67, delivers solid performance for its cost. While it doesn't match the higher speeds of the faster kits, it still provides a smooth gaming experience and represents a fantastic budget option for those looking to save money without sacrificing too much performance. The 6400 CL30 kit at $130 showed noticeable improvement improvements in both average and minimum FPS compared to the 4800 kit. For an additional $63, you're getting a meaningful boost in smoothness, particularly in those critical 1% lows, making it the ideal middle ground choice for gamers seeking better performance without maxing out their budget. Do note that I tuned down the secondary and tertiary timings. Uh, so I was running at 6426, but most 6400 CL30 kits are going to be able to be tuned a little. Finally, the 8000 CL36 kit comes in at 170. While it does provide a small FPS increase, particularly at higher resolutions, the gains are relatively minor compared to the additional $40 you'd spend over the 6400 kit at minimum. Some are even more expensive. At frequencies above 7200, the U-Clock runs at a 1 to 2 ratio on AM5 platforms, and the F-Clock does not need to be synced with the U-Clock and M-Clock on this platform. This setup theoretically mitigates latency penalties at 8000 and above, but in practice, the performance gains for Tarkov remain negligible. Although it's impressive to run RAM at this speed, it doesn't necessarily translate to meaningful improvements for gaming. For a Tarkov focus build, I'd recommend the 6400 CL30 kit, spend a little time tuning the secondary and tertiary timings, and that's going to be the best balance of value and performance for an X3D. In summary, the 4800 kit delivered at worst maybe 80% of the performance of the best performing kit, but at half the cost of the 6400 kit and nearly a third of the cost of the 8000 kit. If you're trying to build on a budget, even a 4800 kit is a perfectly viable option. However, However, the 6400 CL30 kit, priced at 130 for 32GB, hits the sweet spot for most gamers. It offers an excellent blend of performance and value, and the 8000 kit, while cool as a high-end option, doesn't really provide meaningful performance improvements for Tarkov, and is more suited for enthusiasts who want the best hardware regardless of cost. Alright, that's all I got for this one guys. If you found this video helpful, make sure to drop a like and subscribe for more detailed tech breakdowns and gaming benchmarks. Got questions? Drop them in the comments or join the Purology Discord, which now has over 1000 awesome members.
members sharing tips, builds, and gaming setups. It's a great community and we'd love to have you there. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.